y'all for that. We Three Kings, that was awesome. Hear these words from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of the nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant in everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I pray that you bear with me this morning. Uh, I was sick earlier this week and my voice isn't 100% back yet. But it's New Year's Eve. It's New Year's Eve. It's, it's also the Sunday following Christmas. It's the Sunday that one of my former pastors called National Associate Pastor Sunday because he always took vacation. And even though I wasn't yet a pastor, I was always asked to preach on that Sunday. It's National Associates Pastor Sunday. It's New Year's Eve and many people will attend parties tonight, gatherings to celebrate the end of one year and the start of a new year. And at those parties, we, the, the people might gather together and they might hear, if not sing, an old traditional song, Auld Lang Syne. People will hear the song and some will try to stumble through the lyrics because honestly, who really knows the lyrics beyond the one line should old acquaintance be forgot? The meaning of the song is really lost on most people. They know the tune and they know that one line, but they don't know the whole song. And this got me thinking about how much music is a part of our lives and a part of our culture. Music is everywhere. Everywhere you go, you will hear music in our cars and in our homes. Music is part of the backdrop of a lot of stores, playing music in the background to make you comfortable to, so you'll stay and spend more money. Movies and TV shows seem, seem incomplete without a soundtrack. There was a movie that was released several years ago that one of the techniques they used to make the movie seem more eerie was that there was no music in the entire movie, no soundtrack at all. And there are countless genres of music. There's rock, there's R&B, hip hop, rap, jazz, blues, country, pop, classical, and not to mention all the other different genres from around the world, all the different styles of music. Music is such a large influence in our lives and in our society that for many people, the faces of singers and musicians are more recognizable than our elected officials and judges. We also use music for so very much in this time. We sing songs to celebrate birthdays. Choosing a song for a couple's first dance is a huge, de a huge decision because that song becomes part of their story as a married couple. We sing songs to demonstrate our loyalty to a nation or to a school. The Aggie War hymn will get me on my feet and singing every time I hear it. There are songs for every emotion under the sun. There are happy songs. There are love songs. There are sad songs. And there are songs that express anger 
and even songs to express hatred. We use music in our worship. Without worship or without music in our worship, it would seem incomplete, it would seem dead, it would seem still. Our faith is expressed through music. Music might be one of the better expressions of our faith indeed. Our Christian scriptures are actually full of songs. We've spent this Advent season looking at some of the songs that can be found in the scripture that look forward and proclaim the coming of Christ. And this morning we look at a passage from the book of Psalms, a book in our Bible that contains 150 songs. The Bible, it seems, has its very own hymnal to go along with it. For anyone who hasn't spent much time inside of the Psalms, who hasn't sat down and read all of them, you might be surprised by what you might find there. Many people are familiar with Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. There are several Psalms like that, Psalms of praise, Psalms of adoration. But then there are Psalms that express the author's struggle, the author's grief or anguish. And there are even Psalms of lament. There are Psalms where the author's anger can be clearly heard. Why God is this happening? And he sings a song. Not every scriptural hymn is one of hope or peace. Our psalm this morning, however, is one that is filled to overflowing with hope and with praise. Sing to the Lord a new song. All the earth, praise his name. Declare his glory among the nations, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. And the author goes on to tell us why God is worthy to be praised. If you look closely, you might see a familiar structure a chorus of praise in verses one through three, a refrain of why God should be praised in verses four through six, another refrain of praise in seven through nine, and finally, another explanation about why God should be praised in the last verses. And as those last verses, if we listen closely, we might hear the early echoes of a favorite Christmas carol, one that we just sang this morning, Joy to the World. The author of the psalm wrote, let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. And we sing, let heaven and nature sing. The author writes, let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. We sing while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy. The author writes, he will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in faithfulness. We sing in reply, he rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness. Now Isaac Watts, who wrote the song Joy to the World, apparently used Psalm 98, a psalm two psalms later than this one, as his inspiration. But I believe that Psalm 96 could just as easily have been used. But in either case, what we hear from the psalmist and from Isaac Watts is an uncontrollable need to praise God, not just for what God has done, but for what God will do. And is there any more appropriate song to sing than on New Year's Eve? But what God, this songs also point us to what the birth of Christ points us toward. The birth of Christ points us toward the final redemption and restoration of creation one day when Christ comes again. We could spend all morning looking at what the psalm declares about God and what the psalm encourages us to do ourselves. But I want to focus us on one clause at the very beginning. Sing to the Lord a new song. A new song. In our house, there is a lot of singing. From Gemma singing every song she knows in the car until we are driven crazy. Like yesterday when she mashed up the wheels on the bus with Old MacDonald. It was a nice little remix we got. Every night before bed, we sing Jesus Loves Me as we put each of our children to bed and then pray with them. And Lord, help us if we forget to sing it with Gemma. Gemma will not go to bed until we sing Jesus Loves Me. We play music throughout the day. And in a moment of exasperation, Jackie will make up words to a song. 
Y'all don't know this, but my wife is hilarious. And in a moment of frustration or a moment of irritation, Jackie will start making up words to a song. She'll use a familiar tune and then sing about whatever is happening. They're hilarious. Yesterday, we're at lunch and her plate was full of lettuce as she ordered a tostada. She couldn't find the tostada, and so she started singing, where, oh, where can my tostada be? They reveal the absurdity and the hilarity of life. Whatever might be going on, might be frustrating, it might be irritating, it might be ridiculous, but when, you, when she sings a song, you realize that it's really not that serious in the big picture of things. It's actually just something to shake your head about and laugh at. Now, this might not be what the psalmist had in mind when he wrote, sing to the Lord a new song, but I wonder if we might not be getting to the point. Because why would we sing an old song? Isn't an old song sufficient? Old songs are nice, but they just might be too familiar. We might sing the words without pausing to reflect on what they actually say. How many times have we sung an old song in church and we wind up singing it out of routine? Our lips sing the words, but our brain drifts. I've done it from time to time. My lips are singing the old familiar words, but the song is not in my heart. It's not in my mind at that moment. I could be singing a jingle from a commercial for all that it matters. It's an old song. There's nothing wrong with it. But in that moment, it might have lost its significance. Another problem with old songs is that they might not fully express or exactly express what we want to say, what we need to say. They get us close to what we need to say, to what we are feeling. There might even be a line or two in that old song that gets us, but that old song just isn't quite right. It's missing something. And I think I know what the problem is. That old song isn't quite right because try as we might, it's not our song. What we need in our best moments and our worst moments and everything in between is a new song. A song that is uniquely our own and tells the world who we know God to be, about what we've experienced of God and what we hope from God. What we need is a new song formed by scripture, formed by our own experiences and formed by what we are going through. Sing to the Lord a new song. Some songs are timeless, because, and which is fitting because God is timeless. Amazing grace will always tug at my heart. Joy to the world will always stir something up inside of me. But because while God is timeless, God is still also very much timely. I often need a new song for what is happening now. I need a new song because God has done something new in me and in this world. That's what Christmas is all about for me, God doing something new. God has come to earth, wrapped to do something new, yet totally also consistent with the nature of God. God has decided to wrap the infinite nature of God in human flesh with all of its limitations to save humanity with all of its faults, in spite of its sinful nature. And if that isn't worth singing a new song about, then nothing is. I believe that God sings. In one of my favorite works of fiction, The Chronicles of Narnia, the first book, The Magician's Nephew, we see a creation story. And in it, God is portrayed as singing creation into being. I believe that God sings, that God has been singing since creation. And I believe that God will continue to sing. Zephaniah tells us that God will rejoice over you with singing. I believe that the song rose to a new note when God entered our world as a child. And we are all then invited to take part in that song and to sing along with our own songs. So I asked this morning, what is your song? What does your song sound like? If you're like me, I only really sing in the car when I'm by myself and very few other people can hear. 
where people, no one can hear the out of tune notes. I used to not even like singing in church, afraid that people would hear me sing. I sing now and I probably owe my fellow pastors a huge apology for that. But I sing. I'm not just talking about the hymns and carols, but I hope that I'm singing the song of my life. My song is mine own. My song cannot be your song. It cannot be. It has to be different. You haven't walked where I've walked. You haven't done what I've done. You haven't seen what I've seen. You haven't screwed up the way that I've screwed up. But you've also walked a road different than mine. You have experiences and you have wisdom that I will never have. Your song will have different words. My song will hit different notes because we have all experienced God differently. Some of us have had those instant lightning bolt revelations about God's love. Some of us have walked a longer road to walk until we realized that God was there with us all along. But we have all had encounters with God and that unites our songs despite their differences. There are some types of music that I like. There are some that I don't. I don't really care for country music. Jackie doesn't really like rock. So road trips can get interesting as we argue about what kind of music we are going to listen to as we drive. We argue until we eventually just listen to what the backseat DJ wants and we put on Disney princess songs. Everyone has their preferred type of music a music that resonates with them, something that gets them going. There isn't one type of music that will appeal to everyone or moves everyone. It takes all types of music using different words and different notes to inspire a world. And if the world is going to hear the song of God, to hear the, God that, the song that God is singing, the song of Christ, it is going to take all of us singing our different songs. Because someone might not like my song. The notes that I sing might seem out of tune. It might not strike a chord within them. But your song might. It might not resonate with them, but yours may change their life. Songs have a power to change things. And if we hope for the world to sing the praises of God, it will take each of us singing our song of Christ and what God has done for us and what God will do in this world for them to maybe hear their song of Christ and to join together with us with them singing a new song as well. Sing to the Lord a new song. I hope we are all singing whatever song God has given us, a song that only we can sing, full of our experiences, full of the good, the bad, and the ugly part of our lives, but a song of God and a song for God nonetheless. Let us join with God in singing a song to the world. Sing a new song. Sing your song unto the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.